What's going on, everyone? Another episode of The Leatherman Jacket. Coming at you live from both sides of the Mississippi. It's Tuck and Pat. All around the world, people love us. I don't care on Shanghai. I don't care if you're high. Appreciate you coming in <laughs> to listen to The Leatherman Jacket. Yeah, I threw that one out of nowhere, man. Tuck was not ready for that one. But hey, man, it, it's a family show. We're PC. You know, we're, we're good guys. You know, well, doing this. yeah, we might we might have some listeners in um, the 25, 26 states where where you can imbibe. Um, so so uh, we, we appreciate all the listeners, no matter where you are. And um, and we just really wanted to dive headfirst into some of this combine coverage. Um, you know, we we've been able to take a, a little bit of a closer look at the at the film. There was a lot of film. I had 16 hours on my DVR. Um, so I actually didn't get to cover all that, obviously. But from what I did see, um, we're going to have some more details for you, fill in some of the gaps from some of the previous episodes. And, uh, and Pat, what are, what are we talking about on tonight's show? Well, we're filling it in. We're going wide receivers, tight ends, defensive linemen, linebackers. And um, if you don't like talking about one-handed linebackers, I, I suggest you tune out now because, man, <laughs> Shaquem, Shaquem Griffin, I, rookie of the year already. I don't oh, care yeah. if he goes on the practice squad. I don't care if he throws four touchdowns. I, I don't, I don't, whatever his stats are, rookie of the year. You know, everyone made a big deal about a, a certain Missouri prospect coming into the league. That guy okay. had two hands. Right. That's all I got right. to say well, about that. Okay. Well, let me jump in and, and just say on Shaquem Griffin's behalf, um, you know, it's clear what an inspirational story this is. But the fact that he's out there running like a safety, doing the safety drills, um, literally catching balls with, with, with one hand, literally, no matter what the situation is, um, uh, you know, you can't um, say enough about this kid and, and how much he's came to play. And I mean, that, those, those 20 significant reps, we, re- we referenced that already on the, on the last episode, but, but that, that's fired me up you know, in, in such a way that I haven't been fired up since I was watching Ronnie Coleman videos back, back at the gunnery. So, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see this kid. Like, honestly, his numbers to me, like scream first round pick, like, uh, like he seems like, um, one of these types, like, like, like the jets with Darren Lee, like they, they tried to get one of those Rover type backer hybrids. Um, you know, we see that every year now because that's the way the league is going. So, so I think Shaquem Griffin, honestly, like, He's probably not going to be a first round pick just based on, um, you know, a number of different things, and and the league is pretty resistant to change generally. But um, so so he might might be an early second round guy, but in any case, no matter where he's picked up, he's definitely going to get drafted high, um, and he's uh, and he's you know high meaning first fifty picks, and you know I can't I just can't wait to see him out in the preseason knocking heads around and and flying to the ha- football and and, uh, and yeah so. Um, let's see, let's see. Do you have uh, any other linebackers in particular that you'd like to mention before we, before we kind of touch on some other positions? My thing with linebackers these days is what is a linebacker? Are we talking right. about like Paul Plazosny in the middle, or are we talking about these edge rushers who can't do anything, but you don't have them, uh, putting a hand in the dirt? Uh, there's, I know you were talking about in our notes here. We got Tremaine Edwards. Um, he's a guy at Virginia Tech. But right. every, but the game changers are the, uh, are the Von Miller. I don't see Von Miller going into, into much coverage. You know, right. which I know he does occasionally, but. So so. I, I, I just you know I just can't, I I can't I don't know what a linebacker is anymore, Tucker. Well, that, right. I mean, I think you yeah. you said it perfectly right off the bat, like. You know, I, 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 not too long ago, I sent, I sent you a Paul Puzlesny jersey as a gift just because I thought you'd appreciate it. And, and, um, and it's, it's that kind of guy just isn't built anymore. He's, he's, they're not really utilized the same way. Like, yeah, you're going to see him play in the Big Ten on Saturdays. Um, but are you going to see him play in the big, you know, on Sundays? And, and quite honestly, like, just, just from being a Jets fan and, and how linebacker has been a position of need for them for, for almost the entire time I've been a fan. Um, and they've done different things. They, you know, brought in that kid from the Canadian league. They brought in, uh, I'm not remembering any names, but the, the kid from Columbia, like he's, he's more of an inside guy or inside and outside guy. But, um, 
but like you know may, like the what, what i put down were a couple of mayox top five guys you know you know specifically with tremaine edwards of virginia tech you know i didn't see much of them um well obviously i think my I think my pokes beat them in the in the in the in the bowl but uh but so so that's probably not good if, if you can't handle the pokes uh at all uh, when you have one of the top linebackers and then another defensive tackle that's going to the league or at least participating in the combine and Tim Settle. Um, I think that speaks volumes to, to Tremaine Edwards' rating and from, from my take, probably overrating. Uh, I really like Tim Settle. Um, Tim Settle, the D tackle from Virginia Tech, he, he ran really well in the 40, which, which again, I'm not a big straight line speed guy, but but to me that's all effort when you're 300 plus pounds um, if you, if you can get, if you can really get anywhere sub five, two, you're kind of a high effort guy to me, especially from the defensive tackle position where you can kind of explode and stay low and, and, and straight line it a little not, bit. Well, not only that now you're, you can be on the punt team and that's a big right. thing because now it's kind of like we were talking about last week with Troy Apke. Okay. Maybe he's not a great, he's not a great, uh, excuse me. He's not a great actual safety, safety but he can go on kickoff, he can be on punt return, and he can be on punt. Okay, that's done. That position is done. We're good. We don't have to worry about that, you know? And right, which, when, you have a, when you have a guy running a, around a five, that's a, you can put him on punt team. Like, you can put him as the guard on a punt team and not feel terrible about that decision. Right. And thanks again, Coach Pat. That's, 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 that's why I uh, love talking football with you, and I hope our listeners like, like to listen about – some of this kind of this kind of stuff. I know, you know. Um, again, May- Mayock rated Edwards real high. Uh, if he wasn't the first, he was like he was top three because the other guy I, I, I wrote down for 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 something that I just wanted to touch on briefly. I haven't seen any film in this guy. I hadn't really even seen him work out at the combine. But there's a linebacker with three names, and those three names are Leighton Vander Esch out of the Boise State University of Idaho. Um, so, you know, to me, three names, you're probably going to be famous, right? Like, like, uh, a lot of actors do that because they have to separate themselves. You know, sometimes some singers do that, have to separate themselves. And, um, you know, in football, it's a little different because there's so many hyphenated last names that, you know, you might not necessarily, um, stand out that way, but, but even just looking around, I mean, I, again, I don't have any actual information on Leighton Van Der Esch. I hope he does well just because he's a Boise State guy. And The, the Packers and, and the Eagles are very high on him. I, I remember that was pre-combine, and it's okay. coming out more. I'd like to see him go to the Packers because even though Blake Martinez and John Ryan, their two homegrown middle right, linebackers, right. are doing admirable, that's all they're doing is admirable. Right. Um, and I have a pretty decent uh, – decent uh affection for ted thompson as as you do because due to of the course. fact there's three players on that roster who are not homegrown i believe <laughs> which is like obscene like it's like, like unheard of like like the, the reason why i love the packers and i can't wait to the next time they issue stock um is that you know consistently in every year like pat just referenced like like last year it was, it was three players every the so 50 out of 53 players were were drafted by their organization and, and and kept in that program so they're consistently like 90 92 95 percent plus of their roster is homegrown which is which is just the pent ultimate recipe for success if you ask me that's not the right word the ultimate re- recipe for success because although maybe we haven't necessarily seen them win a ton of championships recently i know i mean i know uh rogers has one but um but they are consistently in the playoffs. They're almost consistently in the NFC Championship game if if Rodgers is healthy. Um, so, so like if if they're being taken into consideration strongly by the Packers, like that that speaks volumes about this kid. And I believe you said the, the Eagles as well. Yeah, the Eagles are looking at him too. And honestly, it's not a bad fit. Um, Eagles did make some moves today. We're going to discuss that in another um show which will record yep, stay tonight. tuned yeah record tonight release a day later but um <laughs> over overall just the linebacker core didn't i mean didn't really impress me um the, the edge rushers do like you got well Chubb, that's see that's the thing that's why and that's why i'm so curious like like i love mike mayock i love nfl networks the way they've just 
done everything and, and why I longed for so long to switch providers to to be able to have NFL Network. You know, here in New York, it's it's kind of a old school kind of thing. But um, regardless of all that nonsense, the um, the the great thing about NFL Network to me is is they do have great talent. They 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 get insiders more more than talking heads, right? So so you have people like. With Damian Thomason down on the field, like Sean O'Hara down on the field, people like Mike Mayock with serious, legitimate experience, saying, like saying, "Yeah, I've literally watched the film on this kid before. Maybe I haven't seen all of it, but, but I like he's the guy that has their top fives, right? And like, and so, so all this good stuff. And um, so, so Tremaine Edwards and uh, Van Der Esch there, they're both in the top five for Mayock. Um, and and quite honestly, like like the linebacker core didn't impress me. But where I was going originally was that Mayock has since um, split those two categories, right? So it's interior defensive linemen and edge rushers. It's no longer D tackles, D ends, outside linebackers. You know, like back in the Vernon Golston days. Um, so so it's literally when when you see even even almost for the groups of the combine, it looked like um, DL, which is basically D tackles now. And then edge rushers, which is either one you want, like whatever you want to pick, like uh, just an outside guy, get to the quarterback guy, like like Mayock's real high, and everybody's real high on Marcus Davenport out of uh, UTSA, I believe. And then, um, yeah, he's a he's a San Antonio, uh, he's a UTEP guy. Oh, UTEP, my my mistake. He's um, a UTEP guy. So um, I mean, regardless, I mean Marcus Davenport, we're going to hear a lot more about him just from every media outlet going forward. Um, and so he's he's that edge rusher guy, right? He's like six five plus, like probably six seven. Um, the, Col- the Colts. I've been reading a lot of online about the Colts being very high on Marcus Davenport. Um, they also, it doesn't look like he'll go past number three. So he. No way, really. I mean that that's shocking to me. Like, like it's not like I don't I don't know his whole story. I don't believe. It's not like he like went to like Florida or Georgia and then transferred out. I don't think um i don't even want to have this conversation because it's all (laughs) it's no because it's all a crapshoot right guys like khalil mack like nothing is real like right and honestly it is to the point where all these air quotes everyone experts can come around say this guy's awesome vernon golson played at ohio state um he was drafted in what oh eight that was an oh eight right i think a little earlier than that oh five oh six but he was you know drafted six overall Okay, so you know who he played against? He played against Joe Thomas at Wisconsin at least right. three times. Joe Thomas is a Hall of Famer, first ballot. Vernon yeah. Nelson played against him. Well, There's and that was some... the thing. The storyline on him was that he got all his sacks against, like, in groups, right, in bunches, so probably yeah. against lower competition. Yeah, he got him against Youngstown State, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't know anyone who's played out of Youngstown State other and not even played. Jim Trestle built their program up. Actually, I lied. Najee Tyler, a guy I played against in high school, went there for like nice. a year. Yeah, he's a terrible. Catholic league. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, but, he, um, was, he was dyslexic. He's not a good guy. Well, those two things are completely unrelated. But but let's not have that conversation. Okay. Um, uh, let's let's uh let, let's move on here. I mean I mean the linebackers are what they are. Um, D tackles. Uh, uh, you know Harrison, I Harrison Phillips also out of Stanford. Have you looked at him at all? I heard his name come up a lot. Um, so, so I, again, he's probably connected to a lot of teams with those storylines. Um, I, I didn't actually get to take down much of his numbers, but um, again, I mean, I was just wasn't really that tuned in for the linebacker course. So, so what can you tell me about Harrison Phillips? Um, I look at him. Uh, he reminds me of a mix between Justin Smith from the 49ers years ago and Kyle Williams. Now he looks he's a big guy he can get the double team but he also looks like he's going to give a decent pass rush like he's going to push the pile a little bit okay so right personally he he's going to be a late he's going to be a late first round pick Mm -hmm. um early second round pick he can plug the middle he is a nose tackle so he can take he demands the respect um i think what's going to happen is someone's going to trade trade up for him like maybe someone comes back around on to pick him up in the second round or in the first round rather. Mm-hmm. So like that 31, I definitely see him. Um, there's another gentleman 
his name is, I can't even say his last name, but he's out of Washington State. Hercules, I can't. It's wait, it's, Wazoo, not not Washington. Washington State. Right. Okay. Oh wait. Her- so what are we talking about right now? Defensive he's, tackles. Yeah, he's a defensive lineman, interior okay. interior okay. defensive lineman. Um, okay. Kind of like Danny Sheldon, you know, th- all those guys are pretty much the same. A more effective Danny Sheldon. Well, um, Vite V out of Washington, he's in the X top five. I think everybody knows about him. Yeah, he he's he could be a, a top ten pick overall. Right. All right. Well, well, let's 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 hit the pause button a little bit uh, because I do love interior defensive linemen so much. Um, I, I have a, I have a little bit of a rundown. I want to throw a whole bunch of spaghetti against the wall and see if it sticks uh, against uh, the Rafino wall. So, um, along those lines, Pat, you know, you're pretty heavily involved with our, our first, uh, you know, presenting, um, company, presenting brand, presenting sponsor, however you want to call it. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about them? So guys, once again, Kilo Charlie clothing, they're partnered up with us. They're making this show possible and whatnot, helping out uh, us out, um, as we grow, as we continue to grow, eventually we'll do merchandise and T-shirts and whatnot, and we'll go through Kilo Charlie Clothing to do said T-shirts. Um, mm-hmm. Guys, check it out. Veteran owned and operated. They do some kind of funny skits, you know, satirical and whatnot, really poking fun at uh, current events, doing stuff with pandas, and uh, they'll be doing yeah. some kind of satirical veteran skits. As and they are, they are based out of the Missouri area, St. Louis area, correct? Yes, fact. They are in South County, St. Louis, on the good side of the Mississippi. Um, check them <laughs> out, guys. Check them out on Facebook, Kilo Charlie Clothing, Instagram, Kilo Charlie Clothing, as well as their website, www.kilocharlieclothing.com. So really appreciate them. You know, I am affiliated with them, so I am doing a self promo here. But hey, it's not all me. Kyle Chestnut is the uh, primary owner, and he does a lot of good work. Well, hey, I like I like the operator shirt myself. I, uh, I I own one. I wear one pretty regularly, and it's comfortable. It's a conversation starter, and um and like I've said on on previous previous shows, you know, it's it's not necessarily a political thing one way or the other. It's just it's buying American. It's helping out a small business, um, and and you're getting a quality T-shirt and an affordable price. So thank you to Kilo Charlie Clothing. Moving right along, um, let's see. I'm going. I'm just going to throw a bunch of D tackles at you. And if you've heard of them, great. If you haven't, you know, maybe we can discuss a little bit. I'll, I'll, I, I wrote them down for some reason. Um, so there's a defensive tackle. I actually kind of like, uh, from Yukon. That's probably why I like him. <laughs> and his name, um, is so fantastic that I'm not going to get it correct. Let's see. Folo Runso Fatu Kasi. Um, he ran really well. So straight line speed is there. Um, the 40 time, I don't have it down, but it was good. Uh, and then these are just names, uh, like I wrote down as I was watching. So BJ Hill out of North Carolina state. Um, I don't even know this kid's name, but it's a Jay Jones. So like a Jones defensive tackle from university of Georgia. I think that I wrote that down because again, I like the Virginia tech situation. I I'm kind of interested to see the relationship between a good defensive tackle and a good linebacker. Um, another defensive lineman that everybody has to start watching is um a guy named Reginald McKenzie Jr. Um so his father was there in Indianapolis as the Raiders GM uh you know timing him and 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 being satisfied all that good stuff. So I mentioned Tim Settle the defensive tackle from Virginia Tech earlier. Again, that's the defensive tackle linebacker combo. Um and then other than that, you know there's a few nuggets I have from um from Mayock and other people, but uh, those are the defensive t- tackles. Maybe I might be able to, to do another rundown of offensive linemen here in a minute, but but do any of those names jump off the page, or do you have any other defensive tackles that you'd like to bring up? Um, I like the Foley gentleman. Uh, he's kind of versatile. I, I know him because people have been talking about how he can go left, left and left and, uh, excuse me, one technique and three technique. Um, I believe he is an East Coast guy, to be on to be honest with you, fully. Uh, but he is a UConn dude. Uh, I think he, because of his versatility, that once again makes him makes him uh, more attractive for people. He's also a big dude. He's got an 82 inch wingspan because I remember they were talking about his measurables at the right. combine. He's one of those dudes that when I was watching, 
He's also probably, I think he, I think he's 6'4", 6'5", definitely well over 300 pounds. Um, do I think he'll be a star in this league? No, but at this point, not everyone needs a star. Sometimes they just need some plugs and versatility, right. as I've mentioned over and over again, is what gets players in the league. So I'm definitely pretty keen on him. Um, UConn's been slowly putting out some decent prospects over the last couple of years. Uh, Byron Jones, the cornerback, I believe, out of uh, uh, he um, he. You mean where he went? Yeah, he went to Dallas. So okay. Uh, just guys like that, man. Just keep putting, you know, consistency. And they also, I think, probably the best player they've put out is a uh, what's a uh, Donald Brown. You know, pretty solid NFL right. career. Not a star, but definitely a solid contributor. You know, very versatile in the passing game as well as. Uh, well, wait, hold on, out. hold on a second. Who was the corner that came out of there? It was Byron Not... Jones. Byron okay, Jones. okay, yeah, yeah, okay. He was a right, 2015 in the fir- 2015 first round pick. Okay, great, great, great. Um, okay, so um, I was able to gather just a little bit more information about, like, uh, like obviously this this Fatu Kasi Folo Fatu Kasi guy. Yes. Um, he's either Hawaiian or Samoan or, or something of that ilk. Um, so so clearly, um, you know, there's a reason why those guys. Actually, I want to say one thing because I do know this: American Samoa produces more NFL players than in the continental United States per capita every single year. Um, yeah. because their population is, you know, Pat, Pat probably knows, but it's how small, like it's, it's, it's like a really small, it's not even like a state, right? It's a territory. Um, so, you know, they, they, they continually put out a lot of guys like Domata Pico and, and people like that. Um, so, so they, they're always interesting prospects to watch because it just seems like the numbers add up to, to where they, they might actually get, get on the, on the squad. But, um, some of the other names I was mentioning earlier, um, Zakevon Henderson, the Henderson guy, uh, let's see, defensive tackle, Texas A&M, ran a 5.16. So to me, that's not bad, right? Um, and, I mean, obviously it's not a sub-5. Sub-5 is what really jumps off the page. But, uh, you know, B.J. Hill I think is a high, highly rated guy out at NC State. Um, I'm looking at a guy named, uh, let's see, I still can't find his first name. It's either Ar- Abry Jones or Jarvis Jones. It was definitely Jay Jones, so perhaps Jarvis Jones. But no, that was way too long ago. I'm so confused. Um, but his name is Jay. Period. Jones. Um, defensive tackle. You know, um, and I, I'm pretty sure he's from Georgia. Maybe I'm just blowing smoke at this point. So let's move on. Um, but but what do you, th- Pat? As a coach, like we know that. A defensive tackle can can help plug and 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 make linebackers or help to make linebackers make better plays and sometimes when your you know defensive line's not as strong your linebackers can help you know make up for that like uh, so so we see it at Virginia Tech clearly we're going to see it with Raquan Smith who's just a stud at Georgia um and different things like that I always find it curious or 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 at least um interesting to see every single year you know when these guys come out Obviously, you know, football players come out in the same class, but when there's one star, there's a couple of his teammates on at the combine, um, and they're getting talked about as well. So, so can you provide some some coaching insight uh, into that? Um, as far as other players kind of building everyone up, like right, people making other people look good, basically. You gotta look at the film, man. Like, really, yeah. it comes it it comes down to that. Um, honestly, with the film and everything like that. Uh, you'll look, you'll see how flexible is someone in the hips. You'll see, okay, right. does this player keep doing this? Um, so let's break it down even even more rudimentary than that. I am the I am the linebacker, right? Right. And Harrison Phillips, Vita Via, two guys are really high up in this draft in in my mind personally, are taking three guys. Well. Am I, and I'm just coming in and making tackles for loss or stuffing at the line. They're under two yards. Is that linebacker really good? Or is it that defensive tackle who's not getting that stat? Is he the one clogging everything up and whatnot? Um, one of the reasons why I like Rashawn Evans out of Alabama is, one, because he's out, out of Alabama and they always produce the linebackers. But, two, is – he was versatile enough to be played all over the field, and I saw him take on blocks 
shed the block Mm -hmm. and do this on a consistent basis. And I saw it in, I believe it was the Sugar Bowl was their game. They played the the Sugar Bowl. I saw him do this in the Sugar Bowl a couple times. So to me, that's just a guy you want on your field, uh, on your team. Like nothing, you know, nothing more, nothing less. You want to see guys who are football players who, if they're not making the play, they're making – they're doing the right thing to make the play. It's not all always about catching the touchdown. It's it's could be, okay, how did you run the route? Okay, did you cause that safety to shade over because of your dominance? Okay, great. Um, we see players over and over again throw up amazing numbers in college, and then they don't translate into the NFL. Graham Harrell threw for 6, 000, almost 6,000 yards with Texas Tech. You know, guys – We'll throw for 500 right. yard games and whatnot. Why don't they but, translate to the NFL? Stats don't mean anything. I want to see the actual performance of the player. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that that that's that's all good good insight, and I appreciate that. That's what I was asking for. And and you know, there's just a couple things I want to pick off, piggyback off that. One thing I heard Mayock say was not even from him, but when he was talking to a coach one time, is like, you know, some of these combine you know, storylines tend to be, hey, like this kid's got a really good athletic um, this or that. He's got the body type you want. You know, he's he's put up some good stats at a smaller school, but his body type's not what you want. Something something's something is making him the exception and not the rule, right? And what what the coach and the scout said to Mike Mayock was, you cannot build a team based off of exceptions. You know, I think certain franchises have tried to do that a little too much right and i think we all know who they are they tend to be at the top of the the draft board every single year um when where they just kind of gamble and and yeah we all know the combine i mean the draft is a gamble but but you know you got to you, you can't build a team based off of exceptions you got to follow the rules there's 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 levels to it there's a script to it there's a reason why belichick is so good and so efficient is what i should say um at drafting players is because he sticks to what he believes and what I think is just is not a best player available strictly or a um, need strictly a need pick like he balances that perfectly Um, he has his philosophies he likes left-footed punters and left-footed kickers Um, like things like just little little tiny things like that like or saying hey NFL like I don't need a first round pick but I'll take Brandon Cooks like yeah duh like um so, so just things like that. And you did mention Alabama just, you know, as, as kind of the preeminent factory. Um, Alabama had their pro day today. Like the combine ended like two days ago. So I don't really know what, um, is, is going like, like Nick Saban's obviously just got a factory going on over there, but, uh, but Hey man, it's, 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 it's all gravy. And, and it, I was just shocked to see that. Cause usually there's a little time in, in between the pro day and the, uh, and the combine that usually there's a gap there. Um, but, but are you ready to, uh, to move on to some offensive linemen and see if, see if we can get any of those guys to stick? The last thing I wanted to say about the exception, the rule comment is right. People will always throw out Russell Wilson. Well, guess right. what? If you look at Russell Wilson, their training camp, quarterback situation was Tavares Jackson, a starter, not the best, but a starter. Matt Flynn signed a three year deal. I believe it was $21 million or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he was brought in to be the starter and Russell Wilson was drafted in the third round. No one thought he was going to be the guy. Wes Welker undrafted Tom Brady, sixth round. You're, you know, great players and whatnot, your exceptions to the rule. Yeah, Tom Brady was an absolute atrocious combat combine workout. Of course. You know, your exceptions to the rule aren't are only because people weren't trying to make them exceptions to the rule. It just happened. It just it right. just happened. So that being said, it's like the GM said, we're not looking for we don't build a, our team on exceptions. I have no problem. I think Vernon Golston personally could have been like avoided, but there are teams when you can just look and pick them up. If you're drafting a six, six left tackle, you know, with decent footwork and he goes to the NFL and he doesn't make it as a GM or as an owner, at least I wouldn't be that mad at my GM. Cause it's like, okay, that makes sense. 
whatever didn't work. But if you're drafting a 6-3 tackle who is – or maybe a 6-8 tackle with terrible footwork – and you're thinking, oh, he can he can be the exception, you know, he can just use his size to bury people. Yeah, Dwight Freeney, well, he's not in the league anymore, but Dwight Freeney eats that. Good luck, buddy. Right, right, and, and so that's actually a great 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 way to uh, to just you know rebuttal to to my comment um, because, and again, I think what my comment was saying is more like you can't build that way, you can't build 100%. your base that way, you can't build up a. a you know, a, a pyramid that way. Your foundation can't can't be all exceptions. I um, so, agree with you. Yeah, so 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 before we get into the offensive line, um, I know we talked about them, but but you and I know both know that that's how you build from the inside out. I just want to talk a little bit about something that recently has personally helped me very much. Um, both of our friend, uh, his name is Joe Tomzik. Uh, he is, uh, you know, growing a business. Um, based out based on massage therapy and as well as kind of uh, more holistic kind of medicine kind of thing but I literally had an injury in my back my lower back that I've had since 2012 it's 2018 so you know five six plus years Um, and after literally two sessions it's gone I thought I had I thought I had a herniated disc I thought I had a ruptured disc or something but it like you know I went to PT for it I went to other things for it um, and nothing was working so if you could please go to livepositive365.com, you know, look around on there, see what might interest you, reach out to him. The contact information is on livepositive365.com. You know, mention referral code TUCK and you'll get uh, 10% off your first session. Um, and, you know, it, I promise it'll be worth it. Like you're, you're going to even if it's a 30 minute session or, or how, I don't even know if he offers 30 minutes or, or full hours or however it goes, but um, go to live positive, three, six, com. reach out to him and use the promo code tuck and you will get 10% off your first uh, session with Joe Tomzik. He is licensed. He is certified um, all that good stuff. So, so moving right along, if we're going to go right in back into offensive lineman, Pat, um, I'm just going to literally throw a million names at you. Some of you, some the listeners have heard before, some they might not have, um, so let's let's just fire them off. So before uh, we from, before we start, okay. yeah, um, Orlando Brown out of right. o- uh, Oklahoma should not be a first round pick. And well, that was it, yeah, <laughs> that's a work ethic thing. Um, I am way smaller than him. Granted, I think I said this in one of our previous podcasts. I'm very small. I'm a lot smaller than him. I weigh a lot less than him. And I can do more reps of T25 than him. And I am not a chiseled Greek god that I think I am. So, shame well, and on you could you. probably even do more reps of 225 four years ago than he did, right? Oh, so, de- definitely like 2013 Pat. Could it well, like up? 20, well, I'm talking about 22 year old Pat. So, yes, yeah, definitely. Whatever that is. So, um, you know, because cause, cause these kids, you got to give them the benefit of the doubt, like uh, in terms of age, like, like it is a thing. Like, you know, you're going to be stronger you know, in your mid twenties than you are in your early twenties. That's just the way biomechanics work. But I completely agree with your assessment of the situation. That is not my Oklahoma state bias, pokes bias talking. Um, I actually had written that down and did want to say that Orlando Brown, some team is going to overdraft him. Mayock actually has him as a top five. I think he's got him as two or three, which, which to me was shocking um, considering, you know, that was, that was all pre combine evaluation, but like this kid could not even move around. He couldn't sink his hips. He didn't stiff, fire off, he like he, so like stiff. he didn't like 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 yeah. I saw him a lot on the field, and he impressed me on the field. But when you've got such a power running game, when you've got Baker Mayfield ability to do whatever he wants um, in the college football game, like like yeah, like I think the rest of his team made him look good. So where I'm going with this is, you know, Orlando Brown. He's probably going to be a first round pick. And like Pat just said, that that's a mistake. So, so let's talk about some people that you know maybe they're not first round picks, but I think I wrote them down. So I think that they're going to be a solid um, a pick no matter where they're at. First guy is a small school guy. Uh, he was he was in the beginning of his is um, you know I mean, let's just fire him off. So it's Alex Kappa. He's a D two kid. Uh, he think he's interior. Jamil Demby. Uh, he played in the Colonial League, so that's not you know the highest level of um competition either but both of those kids have shown a lot in the combine 
obviously we've talked about Will Hernandez, right? So I, I wrote down literally check plus, plus, plus. Um, like, so I think he's, although he's projected as interior, I think he could even play left tackle just because, you know, look at the work ethic, right? So, so in, at the senior bowl, he came in at 340, uh, combine, he came in at 327 just to show everybody, Hey, like I can do it if you want me to, but you know, as a guard, you want him bigger and beefier probably be a good pick to the, uh, to the Eagles or the Rams. Well, that they were showing that they were showing a like a comparison to like Lane Johnson and and um, Kelsey, the other Kelsey, Jason. Uh, right? So, so they were discussing all of that. But I, I, you know, I, he, would, I would like to see him go to the Eagles or Rams because then if the, you could swing him to left tackle or even right tackle, there's no pressure because the right. eagle, the Eagles especially, he can learn behind Jason Peters, who's recovering from that ACL tear as well as uh, Lane Johnson on the right side. I know they have Brandon Brooks, who's pretty good. Throw him at left guard, maybe. And then uh, Jason Kelsey in the middle, a solid core. You can throw him at that left guard, because I, I think Brandon Brooks went to the Pro Bowl this year, or was chosen. Right. Um, well, and, and then the Rams, he can learn from uh, Andrew Whitworth, who is an okay, all-time pro. of course. Yeah, he, I mean, he's been uh, good wherever he's at. But, uh, you know, uh, Mayak was talking about, like, like you know, Teams like the Eagles need their linemen to be able to snap and pull. So you need, if you're a center, you got to be able to pull. If you're any other position, you got to be able to pull. You got to be able to to do something. Sean O'Hara calls a square pull. You got to be able to hop out. Which at the Senior Bowl, the practices especially, Will Hernandez was showing that he was doing just very, very, very well. And here at the Combine in Indianapolis, um, he, the uh, the drill instructors were using him as the example for drills. You know, you, we you and I both played high school ball, and you know the coaches don't just pull the worst kid out of the thing just to, to do that so especially at the combine where they want to show it done right um it, it i think it shows he has a high football iq they trust him to play it right but um moving right along um a guy named will clap from lsu uh i wrote down check plus i think he has all 30 whatever of his starts he has a lot of starts he's six four and a half he has short arms so he's got to play inside moving forward but um Let's see, Colby Gossett from App State. Uh, that's another you know small school guy, but in, I would say in, good inside prospect. I believe uh, there's he was a, top five with his bench press. That's I, I think we Col- talked, Colby Gossett. Yeah, he was a top five bench press guy. So that's a high work ethic guy. Am I wrong? Yeah, no, the bench press. I don't care about the reps. I care about what the reps mean, if that makes sense. I think the reps mean a lot more than they're giving credit for. Not the strength, right. but you're working out, you're training. Okay, yeah, of course, and and, and that's all good. That's all gravy. I mean, uh, there's certain positions where it means more, and certain position positions where it means less. So you definitely got to show up on the bench there. Um, there's one other kid. Let's see. Oh, I actually do have his name down. Taylor Hearn, out of Clemson University, the you know perennial CF CFP guys. Duh. Um, he, I, I don't have the number of his starts, but it's like he's been starting there like the whole time, right? So the whole time that they've been, you know, losing to Alabama, then beating Alabama, then you know, still having a pretty darn good season this year, um, you know, all, all, all throughout like the last three years, like he's been there. Like I don't know if he's their center or their guard or what have you, but um, I think he's an inside guy. And uh, but he, Taylor Hearn out of Clemson is another guy to watch for sure. Um, and those are all the guys that I have down just from that group. Oh, there's actually one more guy. I'm sorry. Uh, from the University of Oregon Ducks, one of the best sport management programs in the whole country. Um, they're, they have a tackle named Tyrell Crosby who has played both right and left tackle. So if you could do that for the Oregon Ducks and run around and play right and play left, um, I think, I think you're, you're definitely a prospect. So, so let's see. Alex Kappa, Jamil Demby, Will Hernandez, Will Clapp, Colby Gasket. Tyrell Crosby, Taylor Hearn, and um, that's about it. But but it's what I have down for now. So if, if, so if we see any other guys pop up, we'll bring them to you. Um, but you know, I just we're, we just love the offensive and defensive lines. You know, that's that that's been the adage from time immemorial. You build from the inside out, right? So you build from the offensive line and defensive line because if you don't have those two positions set up, then you know the rest of your you know linebackers, the rest of your skill position. Um, your secondary, everybody else is going to have more pressure on them. So, so Patrick, I've had a great time tonight. Um, hopefully our listeners enjoyed our banter a little bit. Um, I want to thank all our listeners. 
um, for, for tuning in tonight. And I really just want to, to say that I'm grateful. Please, please like, comment, subscribe. We're on SoundCloud. Uh, we are on Spreaker. We are on YouTube. We are now on iTunes, recent development. We are now on iTunes podcast. So um, I know that a lot of people really only use either iTunes or Spreaker for – I mean, uh, wow, iTunes or SoundCloud for data reasons on their mobile. So if we're now on both of those. So we should be able to put up our shows r- really quick turnaround on both of those mediums. Please like. Please comment. Please subscribe. Please hit subscribe because that tells us that we're growing. Um, and then other than that, Pat, what do you got? Uh, don't draft the kid out of Notre Dame. And draft the, the UT kid, Connor Williams. Those are Wait, which ones. kid out of Notre Dame? Which kid? Mike, Mike McGlingley. I can't but Yeah, the, the top-rated tackle? Yeah, he, don't draft. I don't – bust. Okay. All right, that, that's a Pat's call, pick right there. That's call, a – Calling it. Calling it. I didn't like his combine. Uh, I just think he's going to be a bust. I don't – he's okay. big boy. He's a big boy. Don't get me wrong, but – Well, I like Quentin Nelson. You know, I, I never – Actually, yeah. I, I think I, I think I saw. Um, I don't know if McGlinchey uh, played much at the Senior Bowl, but uh, but for some reason, I actually did have that same impression. And I, I definitely we haven't really talked about it, you and I off air. So um, so I had that same impression from some reason or another. But um, but Quentin Nelson, so he's the guy to go with if you ask me. Yeah, um, my my tackles are Quentin Nelson, Connor Williams. And then uh, I, um, Connor Williams, or excuse me, Quentin Nelson, Connor Williams, uh, Hernandez, and uh, if if you can pick up Orlando Brown, maybe in the second round, I support second, that. Right? Yeah, a late second round. Uh, this this McGinley dude, you know. Was I it, I, wait, hold on, hold on a sec. Wasn't Quentin Nelson an interior guy though, like strictly? Yeah, I'll take a guard, man, in the first round. Like, they oh, of course, if you know he's gonna hit, yeah. Yeah, like the the Redskins took Brandon Sheriff out of Iowa, and he was a guard. Like they they were saying he could swing, but he's a Pro Bowl guard. I'll take that, man. Okay. I'll, I'll take that. But other than that, guys, really appreciate y'all tuning in. You know, Tuck, take it from here, man. I'm 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 grateful every time we come on the air. Well, Pat, well, you know, it's it's a little tough for us. You know, we're a little different uh, than other podcasts because we have to do everything remotely, and why. Our first combine episode was so special for us because we actually were able to sit in the same room. But you know, we're we're trying our best. You know, uh, that's not a, that's not an excuse. That's just our situation. Um, so so Pat's been able to do a lot of great work uh, to get us on iTunes. Um, so check us out on there because you know most people use that. But but you know, and definitely Kilo Charlie clothing. If you like to buy American at all, and if you wear T-shirts at all. Check out Kilo Charlie Clothing on Facebook, kilocharlieclothing.com. If you suffer from any type of chronic pain, no matter what it is, no matter what you think it is, go to livepositive365.com. Use referral code TUCK, and you'll get 10% off your first session. Um, that, that, that's our, our mutual friend, Joe Tomzik. He's a certified, licensed uh, massage therapist uh, who also specializes in other means of holistic um, medicine, more and more Eastern philosophy. Um, so, so definitely check them out. Live positive three, six, com. Check out kilo, Charlie clothing.com. And I've been Tuck. He's been Pat. And this has been the Letterman jacket podcast. <laughs>